let's be real using upskilling techniques in modern games is common practice now so much so that in my opinion having access to the best upskilling technology is critical to getting the best gaming experience possible love it or hate it with new rendering techniques popping up every now and then and games becoming more and more demanding it won't be long before you have to resort to some kind of upskilling technique to get your desired fps games like alan wake 2 and the new avatars game have ray tracing turned on at all times making it hard to run on older gpus and even on mid-range gpus from a year or so back then there are unreal engine 5 games which incorporate stuff like nanite to render complex geometry and they respond extremely well to upscaling. I mean, Unreal Engine 5 games, they always need some kind of upscaling technique for you to get the best frame rates possible. So in this video, we will compare the two most popular upscaling techniques in games. That is Nvidia's proprietary DLSS, which only works on Nvidia RTX GPUs versus AMD's open source FSR, which works on all GPUs and see which one of these upscaling techniques provide the best image quality. Because what's the point of upscaling if you're taking a nose dive in terms of image quality? Like I said, sooner or later, you will have to resort to some kind of upscaling techniques to get your desired frame rate. And in doing so, if there is a huge drop in image quality, then that wouldn't be a good situation. But before we start the comparison, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. I'm really trying hard to reach that 10,000 subscribers. So please support me in my goal. Also join our Telegram community link in the description, engage in tech discussions and get alerted on the best tech deals the earliest. With that said guys, let's get on with it. When it comes to image quality, upscalers work the best when the input resolution is high enough. Basically higher the input resolution, easier it is for the upscaler to provide the best image quality. But I feel upscaling is most suitable for prolonging the life of older GPUs or lower end GPUs where playing the latest games at a higher resolution like 1440p or 4K is out of the question. Let's say something like the RTX 2050 mobile or something like the RTX 3050, the 2060 or even the 3060. And from AMD, that would be like something like the uh, RX 5500M, the RX 6500M or RX 6600 series of products, both laptops and desktops. These GPUs are primarily 1080p GPUs in 2024. So in this video, we will compare Nvidia's DLSS against AMD's FSR at the challenging 1080p resolution. And the device I used to capture all this footage on is the Acer Nitro V RTX 4050, which I made detailed in-depth review on please go and check it out if you want to look at it now i wanted to cover a lot more games but as you know this is not a sponsored channel so i had to purchase and i have to purchase all the gear that i review so i just happened to find the right buyer at the right time so i just had to sell my nitro v um, which is why i couldn't capture you know even more games but i think whatever i've captured that is good enough to give you the gist so with that said let's get started so the first game is Cyberpunk 2077. This is native 1080p with TAA. Notice the shimmering on the garage door as we strafe side to side. Now this is DLSS set to quality. And notice the image despite being internally rendered at 720p is still more stable and far less distracting than native. Switching to FSR and immediately the image is far less stable and the shimmering is a lot more distracting. When doing a side by side comparison, it is pretty clear that FSR's image quality is just far less stable. The difference between FSR and DLSS is so big that if we switch the DLSS quality image for DLSS balanced, the image quality is still superior to FSR quality. And switching to FSR balanced is something I would absolutely avoid. Here is the second scene. This is 1080p native. It's reasonably stable, but we can still spot some shimmering on the back grilling of the cop car and the electric post and also a little bit of shimmering on the tree leaves. Now this is DLSS quality. The overall image is slightly softer looking on my 27 inch monitor. But once again, the image is a lot more stable. The shimmering on the aforementioned areas is gone. 
DLSS even managed to recreate the metallic grill over the cop car window, although this part is a bit more shimmery than native. Switch to FSR quality and it's clear, the image is far less stable, there is shimmering all over the place and it is very distracting. Comparing side by side and the difference is night and day. Even DLSS balanced looks better than FSR quality and I would definitely avoid using FSR balanced. This is the last scene. Firstly, it's native 1080p and you can see some shimmering on the fencing and some of the vegetation. Then using DLSS native makes the image very slightly softer but once again the image is amazingly stable with next to no shimmering. Hard to believe that it is being rendered at 720p internally. Switching to FSR once again introduces a lot of shimmering which looks very distracting on my 27 inch monitor. Comparing side by side and the differences are clear. The FSR image quality falls apart in my opinion. The next game is Hogwarts Legacy, starting with native 1080p. Honestly, there aren't many issues with the native 1080p image. It could have been a bit sharper, but that's how TAA looks. Pay attention to the water puddle and the buildings in the background. Switching to DLSS native, the image is very slightly softer and there is a very slight bit of shimmering introduced on the puddle and on the buildings in the background. One might not notice this during actual gameplay though. Moving on to FSR quality and the shimmering on the puddle and the background is more noticeable but still I would say it's not terrible like in Cyberpunk. Looking at them stacked side by side it is easier to spot the difference. Once again, DLSS balanced is better than FSR quality and FSR balanced is something I would avoid. Here is another scene starting with native 1080p TAA. Pay attention to the foliage and the area just around the character's body. Now this is DLSS quality, slightly softer and slightly more shimmery. And this is FSR quality which is noticeably more shimmery than DLSS. Here they are side by side. Overall I feel in this game FSR is just about acceptable. Next up is God of War, starting with native 1080p, which looks perfectly fine in my opinion. And I'm playing back this footage at half speed. Moving on to DLSS quality and the image is again very slightly softer and there is a tiny bit of shimmering in the thin tree branches in the background but nothing major. But switching to FSR quality and the image quality falls apart. Just look at the disocclusion artifacts around Kratos' body as he strafes side to side. There is so much fizzle around Kratos' body as things appear around him and the tree branches in the background are also a lot more shimmery. Here's them side by side and the difference is very noticeable when gaming. There's just way too much disocclusion artifacts with FSR in this game.
Once again, DLSS balance is a lot better than FSR quality. And you should totally avoid using FSR balance in this game. Next up is Spider-Man Remastered, starting with native 1080p with TAA. And you can see some shimmering in the bridge lines and the crane-like structure. Switching to DLSS quality makes the image better than 1080p native, with much better stability and next to no shimmering. Now switching to FSR quality just magnifies the issues that we saw with native TA image with even more shimmering in the same areas as native and it's very very noticeable. Take a look at them side by side, even DLSS balanced is slightly better than FSR quality here. and I wouldn't bother with FSR balanced. Here is another scene starting with native TAA, where you can see noticeable shimmering on the background building and a little bit of shimmering on the tree leaves swaying in the wind. Now switching to DLSS quality doesn't fully solve all the issues with native TAA image, but it's definitely a lot more stable. Switching to FSR quality again magnifies the issues with native TA and now there is very noticeable shimmering in the background windows and on the tree leaves. This is very distracting. Here they are side by side and the image quality is highly in favor of DLSS. Finally, we have avatars, frontiers of Pandora, starting with native TA, which looks pretty good. There is the tiniest bit of noise in the foliage, but it's nitpicking at this point. Moving on to DLSS quality, and there is very little difference. The image almost looks identical. Lastly, we have FSR quality, and it's not bad. There is a little more noise and little more shimmering on the vegetation and a touch more disagglusion artifacts around the bugs flying around those plants, but it is perfectly acceptable. It's a lot better than those previous games. Here they are zoomed in a bit. You can spot the shimmeriness and the disocclusion artifacts on the FSR image a little more, but it is really not bad. If you are gaming on a smaller 15 inch screen, you may not even notice this. Here they are side by side, the DLSS image is definitely overall better, but the FSR quality is not bad. Although moving to FSR balance and the issues are magnified a bit more. So it's pretty clear that Nvidia's DLSS is far superior compared to AMD's FSR at the 1080p resolution. In fact, Nvidia's DLSS can produce a better image than native 1080p, especially in games which have really bad TAA implementation, for example, like we saw in Cyberpunk 2077. Of course, FSR's strength is in the fact that it can run on all GPUs, as it doesn't rely on any special hardware and is open source. AMD's bet was that since FSR is open source and can be more widely adopted, it would nullify Nvidia's DLSS as a selling feature. But honestly, in my opinion, AMD needs to put a lot more work into FSR and make it definitively the better solution because they just can't play catch up with Nvidia and just rely on open source excuse in my opinion, because at the end of the day, FSR will remain as a second grade option for those who don't have access to DLSS. 
In fact, I would argue that Intel's XCSS is a better solution than AMD's FSR because it can rely and take advantage of Intel's AI units in the Arc GPUs providing image quality very close to Nvidia's DLSS in many games while at the same time it can be also used on other GPUs by using a DP4A fallback layer and still produce image quality that what I've seen is better than AMD's FSR. In my opinion, it is not rasterization performance, it is not even ray tracing performance, but in my opinion, the biggest difference between AMD and Nvidia's GPUs at the moment is their upscaling techniques because upscaling is becoming more and more important as we go forward, as games become more and more demanding. It is going to be a make or break feature in my opinion. So AMD needs to get their act together and invest some real effort in making FSR the definitive solution that can be used on other GPUs or even make sure that FSR works the best with AMD GPUs. Just make a solution that is working best with AMD GPUs, make a solution that is better than Nvidia's DLSS and create some competition in my opinion. But there may be some good news as there are rumors that AMD is working on an AI upscaling solution uh, that will help FSR produce better image quality. So let's hope that AMD is able to achieve this sooner than later. With that said guys, thank you so much for watching. Do let me know what you thought about this video. What do you personally think about these upscaling techniques? What do you think about FSR versus DLSS? Yeah, let me know. And also consider subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Join our Telegram community, link in the description, engage in tech discussions and get alerted on the best tech deals the earliest. With that said guys, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.